bang, bang, bang. You have to get out. It's the pre-dawn darkness, and my neighbor is banging on my front door, warning me that the largest wildfire in New Mexico's history is approaching a nuclear waste containment facility perched above the only road out of Los Alamos, New Mexico. Within minutes, I'm in my car with a few possessions, one of thousands of refugees on the road to Albuquerque. But this event and leaving it all behind can be a liberating experience. And in my case, it changed me from an academic scientist studying space to an applied scientist building artificial intelligence technology that can warn us of dangers anywhere here on Earth. Now, danger comes in many forms. Uh, as humans, we're really good at recognizing and reacting to short-term crises like that wildfire, but we tend to be really bad at recognizing the slow changes that indicate other types of threat. And um, while we've been worried about terrorism and war and the economy, the fact is that the threat of resource depletion and global climate change are real and growing, and the consequences are going to be profound. And so to keep ourselves and our families safe, we need to know the answers to some really hard questions, like, is that forest near my house going to burn down? Is the city in which I live going to run out of water? Is there actually a risk that the regional food supply could collapse? Do we need to get out? So our basic technology for understanding the world around us is the map. And we've been making maps for a very long time. The United States is the most advanced country in the world for making maps. But even we only update these maps every five years. And we all have a sense that that's far too slow a rate of change given the rate of change of society. In the last six years, we've started to make maps of the food supply here in the United States, but just for the United States, only once a year. And there's nothing like this for the whole rest of the world, where the food production is now, we, we require it to produce food for seven billion human beings. Okay? So what we need is a living, breathing atlas for the world. Okay? That's continually updated, and not just a map for now, but a map that also includes the past, that goes back years and decades, and allows us to detect those early warning signs of change. And for the first time in history, we actually have the right combination of technology to allow us to make this type of map. Now, uh, some of the pieces for this technology have actually been around for a while. Um, in 1972, we launched a satellite called Landsat, which uh, take, take, takes digital pictures, radios those pictures back to, the, back to the ground, and the descendants of the satellite are still up there, uh, taking pictures of the world every day, every week. Um, but in 1972, the world's best supercomputer looked like this. Um, that's how people used to dress at national labs in 1972. <laughs> and there was just, and, and that computer is less powerful than the smartphone that you probably have in your pocket. Okay. So all we could do back then was basically try and preserve the data for the future. So the digital photos were converted to film and put in a fridge at a government lab and kept there for years and then decades while the computing technology caught up. And it was only a few years ago that the US government, in combination with some of the largest internet companies, transferred all of this data back to the web, where we can now all share it. But the photos is, are not enough. You need to turn the photos into maps. And unfortunately, there are not enough humans in the world that know how to do that map making. But here's the second big technology. We no longer need to do this by ourselves. In the last few years, there has been a fundamental breakthrough in our ability to teach computers to see. Called machine learning systems, they're based on how our brains work. And conceptually, they're very simple. You start with a piece of software that knows how to modify itself. You show it examples of what you want and what you don't want, and you ask it to make decisions. And if it makes the right decision, you give it the computer equivalent of a cookie. <laughs> and if, you, if it makes the wrong decision, you give it the computer equivalent of a small electric shock. <laughs> yes. And over many cycles of training, the system evolves to do what we want. And once you've taught one program how to do this task, you can clone that program to thousands of other computers on the internet on what we call the cloud. And that combination of machine learning algorithms on thousands of computers is finally able to process all the satellite data coming down every day. Okay? 
So what does that look like? So if you look at the, the raw satellite data coming back every day, it looks like this, and it's a mess. There's big holes because of clouds, there's all sorts of noise, it's hard to interpret. But when you show enough data to the computer, we can start to turn it into this. Okay. So what we're looking at here is the, we believe this is the first true real-time cloud-free view of the world. Here we're looking at all of Iowa, some of the most productive farmland across the United States. And we can see the cycle of bare soil becoming plants which grow to maturity and are harvested and return to bare soil. And when you show it at this rate, with several frames uh, where each second corresponds to a bunch of days, we're starting to look at the world as, an, as a single organism. Okay? And the satellites have the potential to go beyond human biology. So here we're actually looking at the world in infrared, where the plants and the soils and the building materials that we use have characteristic colors which allow us to start to separate out things and not just look at the video, but start to, for example, map out things. So here we've taught the computer to map out where the, uh, where the fields are all across Kansas. Okay? And you can go a step further and you can actually have the computer learn how to estimate how much food is coming out of each patch of ground. And so for the first time, we've built a system that is faster, cheaper, and more accurate than the traditional manual techniques of estimating food crop across the United States. And if you can understand the regular changes like this, then you can also start to understand some of the unusual changes. So very large hailstorms that cause hundreds of millions of dollars of crop damage, or very large flooding that cause the evacuation of tens of thousands of people. And while all that agriculture that I just showed you looks very impressive, the thing to know about it is that the most productive farmland in the US is not being used for food for humans. It's actually going to ethanol for our vehicles and to feed for our factory farmed animals. And meanwhile, our food has been shifted, our food production has been shifted to the prairie states and to the dry southwest, where this scale of agriculture is only feasible because of the existence of ancient underground aquifers that filled up through rainfall over thousands of years, but which we are now drinking down at a rate where this whole system could start to collapse within 20 years. And so machine learning systems that are in the cloud that are able to process all the satellite data in real time will be looking for these patterns of use and misuse of natural resources all over the world, which are the indicators of serious change that triggers, uh, that, that, that triggers mass migration of, of human population, triggers famine, and triggers local ecological extinction. So that giant wildfire that happened back in uh, 2000. Um, that was the biggest fire of its kind in at least 50 years of history. But in the 10 years since that fire, it doesn't even make the top 10 list anymore, just for the state of New Mexico. And in fact, when an even bigger fire threatened the town of Los Alamos again in 2011, I'm happy to say that I wasn't a refugee a second time. Between the two fires, we'd built an, an earlier form of our machine learning system that assessed the risk to the forest and gave me the information I needed to make a decision to move my family to Santa Fe where we were safe and where we were able to help others. So someday soon, what I'd like to leave you with, so someday soon when you hear a bang on the door warning you of danger and encouraging you to take action, don't be surprised if that Good Samaritan is an artificial intelligence system. <laughs>